I'm ready. Hello, travelers. Welcome to Fulbright Week at Reach the World. For over 20 years, Reach the World has used virtual exchange to inspire youth to become curious, confident, and compassionate global citizens. This week, we are proud to celebrate our longstanding partnership with the Fulbright Program. Fulbright travelers work tirelessly to foster mutual understanding between the people of the United States and other nations. Under normal circumstances, Fulbright travelers share their experiences abroad with K through 12 students in the United States through Reach the World virtual exchanges and school visits. But this week, we're bringing their stories and the world into your homes. You can find a complete listing of Fulbright Week live stream events and much more at athome.reachtheworld.org. Excuse me. Today, I'm very happy to welcome Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Sofian Israwi. Sofian is from Zagora, Morocco, and he's currently, actually just finished, um, teaching Arabic at Bennett College in Greensboro, North Carolina. In addition to being a Fulbright Scholar, Sofian is an accredited tour guide with the Moroccan Ministry of Tourism. So we are exploring Moroccan culture today with an expert. To our live stream viewers, please use the YouTube chat bar to let us know you're here today and also to share any questions you have for Sofian along the way. Just put them in the chat bar and we'll be sure to pass them along to Sofian after he's finished with his presentation. And we'll get to as many questions as we can in the next 30 minutes. But without further delay, I want to welcome to Reach the World, Sofian. Hey, Sofian. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Great. Glad to have you today. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Um, so, uh, think should I please myself or just go straight? All right. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, I am Sofian Serawi. I am originally from Morocco and uh, I was born. Uh, in a tiny village in, in Zagora city. Um, and uh, I finished my master's degree uh, in, from Qadiyad University in Morocco, uh, exactly in Marrakesh. And then uh, um, I am a Fulbright foreign language teaching assistant. I teach Arabic at Bini College, as Jim mentioned. And um, a part also of our, uh, of our duties as Fulbrighters is to share our cultures, our experiences, be it um, social or uh, professional, let's say. And um, uh, beside this, uh, I am a tour guide. Uh, I am an accredited tour guide, actually, from the Ministry of Tourism of Morocco. And um, I've been working like uh, for this uh, for the last two years, uh, three, approximately three years now, but let's say two years. Uh, yes, that's it. Um, uh, <laughs> you can I just go straight uh, to the to our topic? Yeah, dive it's, right uh, in. Okay, sure. Um, so uh, today's topic is gonna be about uh, it's gonna be about Morocco. Uh, I'll try my best to reveal to you some aspects of Morocco, um, like uh, some uh, geographical aspects, some social aspects, and. Uh, Along the way, if you have any questions, if you have anything that you'd like to ask me, you can just comment or um, send your text message to Tim and then I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, you can stop me also uh, while I am uh, giving the presentation if anything is not clear or, or if you need more explanation of any point. Um, so let's get started and uh, I will... Um, um, I will start by, uh, so this is this is gonna be the title of our topic today. It's gonna be Morocco, sitting 14, I live in wonder. Um, and um, uh, so uh, before we start to talk about um, the various aspects Morocco can offer or Morocco has, um, it's better to uh, clarify that, that Morocco is, is an African country, uh, which means that it's in the African continent. And uh, uh, however, uh, Morocco has a very has a very distinctive and it has a very strategic location uh, on the world map. So to, to describe to better describe Morocco, actually, the, the Moroccan king uh, Hassan II um, he described Morocco as Morocco is like a tree whose roots are in Africa, but whose branches breathe in European air, and that's the metaphor used by the king to describe Morocco. 
a country that is profoundly uh, historic and traditional and also a country also that, that envisages on the future and on the Western world, um, knowing that Morocco is very close to Europe for sure. It's, it's eight miles from, um, from the north of Morocco to the south of Spain, uh, crossing the, the Mediterranean Sea. Um, so, so that's Morocco basically, it's on the African continent. It's, uh, it's surrounded by uh, Algeria to the east and the Atlantic Ocean to the west and Sub-Saharan Africa and Mauritania to the south and then Europe to the north. Uh, so yes, that's, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's Morocco on the world map, but this is the Moroccan map. And um, so Morocco, like um, anyone who would look at this map, they would know that Morocco has to, uh, let's say has to like doors on the, on the, on the one on the Pacific Ocean and one on the Mediterranean Sea. And this also, and this also has for a long time made of Morocco a place or a hub of uh, of many dynasties that are crossing Morocco towards Europe or towards Sub-Saharan Africa. And still, to now, actually, Morocco is uh, is a very um, is a very important passage for people crossing from Sub-Saharan Africa or from Africa to Europe, and vice versa. Which means that. Uh, being, being in Morocco, you would not fail to see how much uh, rich is it, it is in terms of cultures and in terms also of geography and in terms also of demography. So you would see a lot of people interacting in Morocco. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's worthy of mentioning that Morocco is, um, Morocco was, is a very, 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 is one of the oldest actually, uh, or one of the historic uh, countries in the world. Uh, the first Moroccan state was created in 788 by, by, by the Idrisid dynasty or by what is called uh, Idris, al, Idris the first or Idris the Um And then after that, many dynasties also um, um, found found Morocco a very fertile ground to, um, to govern and to, and to lead. Um, so uh, with this being said, uh, it, it's, it's, it's also uh, just to give you a clear idea or some facts about Morocco before, before we, 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 we look at the, at the next slide, is that uh, Morocco is officially called the Kingdom of Morocco. Uh, it has two official languages, which are uh, Arabic and Tamazight. The political system of Morocco is a constitutional parliamentary monarchy. And uh, beside this Morocco also, as I said, thanks to its geographical location, which is very close to Europe and very close also, uh, and on the African continent, uh, many foreign languages are being spoken, in, spoken in, in, in Morocco. A case in point is Spanish and French and English. But it doesn't also exclude the fact that um, there are people also who speak other foreign languages, but these are the very, uh, the most um, known uh, foreign languages in Morocco. Of course, uh, uh, French uh, is, the, is, uh, is, is like an official language, especially the language of administration, the, of business, and so on and so forth, uh, due to the, the fact that Morocco was colonized by France, starting from 1912. Uh, and then also English also is spoken and Spanish also is spoken. Spanish is more widely spoken in the north of Morocco than in the south. Because as I said, being it's being very, very close to Spain on a distance of eight miles. Uh, the, the currency of Morocco is the Moroccan dirhams or it's abbreviated as MAD, which, may, which stands for Moroccan dirhams. And space is um, space as you as you can see is um, 710, 710, 850 square kilometers. That's the distance of Morocco from the very north of Morocco, uh, a city called Tangier, to the very south of Morocco, to a city called Liguira. So from the north to the south, that that's the distance Morocco lies. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, as I said already, that Morocco is a very, very, uh, it has a very, very uh, rich geography. Um, 
maybe uh, with some of the facts that people actually do not know about Morocco is that Morocco is uh, you can you can do as or you can see many geographical um, um, things in Morocco. You can, for example, experience the snow. You can experience the desert. You can experience the the sea or the ocean, and and uh, and 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 also the forests. So um, this is this is also one of the things about Morocco. Um, it should be noted that Morocco is, or let's say, the first people to settle in Morocco. Uh, are called the Amazigh, or as they are referred to Berber, even though that's not a term that is uh, that is used, but thanks to it, to its negative connotations. So it's substituted with the word Amazigh, which means uh, so Amazigh those are the first inhabitants of Morocco, and and actually be, even before the first Moroccan state was created in 788, people who were who were living in Morocco at that time were the Amazigh or the Berbers. Well, uh, those are the first people to settle in Morocco. And then with the uh, uh, with spread of Islam and uh, with Morocco also being, uh, being a passage of trade uh, for like for, for all the, always have been uh, a passage of trade from Africa to Europe or from Europe to Africa. So uh, many people settled in Morocco after that. So nowadays, if you go to Morocco, you will see um, uh, you will see a very rich uh, demography in Morocco. You will find white people, uh, very white people, and you will find also black people which have African heritage, and then you will find also Arabs which mostly came from the Mediterranean, uh, from the Mediterranean countries, from Mecca or from Saudi Arabia, let's say, and from Qatar and from other surrounding countries. So nowadays Morocco is a very is a very is, is is a hub of cultures that all interact together in a peaceful way, and uh, thankfully Morocco uh, the 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 different groups of Morocco they share a lot more than they more than there are things that set them apart. So that's 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 also one of the one of the things uh, about about Morocco. Uh, uh, it's here, um, there are two words that I would like to highlight here, which are the Kasbas and the Soks. And these are the two terms that we will come to in, in, in the next uh, slides. But before that, I would just like to present Morocco to you in pictures, so you have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. So when we talk about Morocco, we talk about different geography, we talk about different cultures, and we talk about different groups of people. Uh, in terms of geography, this is uh, geography you can see here that uh, Morocco, you can find the waterfalls, which are mostly found in the Atlas Mountains. And uh, speaking of Atlas Mountains here, we are speaking of three kinds of Atlas Mountains. High Atlas Mountains, Anti-Atlas Mountains, and Middle Atlas Mountains. And each of these, they have different characteristics. Uh, and then the desert, which, which I am from originally, I am from southeast of Morocco, and that's a desert area, or that's like a, the desert, basically. And then um, the Mediterranean Sea, which is also here. And uh, one of the most important cities in Morocco is Tangier. And Tangier actually, the first Moroccan state actually, or the, the, Idris, the uh, Idris the first, who is the founder of the first Moroccan state, he also settled first in Tangier when he first arrived to Morocco. So that that says that Tangier is one of the most important cities in Morocco, especially in the northern Morocco. Uh, we, we have also here on, on, on the left uh, two pictures. You can see there, that's a green space and uh, a traditional houses. And those are what we call uh, Xor. Uh, Xor uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will explain the term later. And then we have the oasis. The oasis is mostly found in southeast of Morocco. And uh, the oasis is made up from the palm trees or the palm giving trees. So the trees that give baits. Uh, and it is actually considered, um, the southeast of Morocco, of course, it's actually considered um, the exporter of dates to the rest of Morocco, given the fact that it contains the biggest oasis. Hey, Sophia, let me interrupt you just a minute if I could. Um, I, we have a lot of students who are joining us today, mostly on the live stream, and I want to make sure that they 
remember that they can put any questions they have for you in the live stream chat bar. Please do that. Um, we see your questions pop up and we'll pass them along to Sofian. Sofian, we're about halfway through. So you've got about five, five, 10 more minutes before we take some questions. All right. Um, so um, so talk, talking about Morocco, um, we always talk about um, about three different parts, let's say, or three different uh, yeah, parts. We talk about the north of Morocco and we talk about the middle of Morocco, which is mostly the Atlas Mountains. And then we talk about south of Morocco with its two dimensions, the southeast and southwest. So um, um, this picture summarizes uh, what we find in Morocco. So um, the north of Morocco, for example, it's actually uh, a very, um, you cannot, uh, there is a lot of similarities between the north of Morocco and the south of Spain, uh, specifically the south of, of Spain, especially Sevilla or, 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 what we, or what's called in, in Spanish Sevilla. So um, there is a lot of resemblance between the north of Morocco and this part. Um, uh, as, as I said, again, thanks to the, to the, the, to the relative or the relative distance that separates the north of Morocco to, to the south of Spain. Uh, one of the most important cities in the north of Morocco, as I already mentioned, is Tangier. Uh, it's an international city, and it's also the home of the of the biggest port in Africa, which is the mid uh, mid port, or that's like the Mediterranean port. It's it's a it's named after the King uh, Mohammed VI. And Tangier has a special character that exists apart from other Moroccan cities. Actually, it has actually drawn many artists uh, from the from a long time ago, from Henry Matisse to Paul Bowles and the writers of the Beat gen Generation. Tangier is the main link between Europe and Africa, as I said. So Tangier is the very northern city in Morocco. And uh, being actually in Tangier, especially at night, you people, uh, if you are in a high area, you can see the lights of Spain uh, from a distance, or, or, or the Spanish Marine to be more, uh, more specific. Um, <clears throat> this is also one of the Moroccan cities that is very, very, uh, it's very unique and it's very uh, uh, famous in Morocco. It's a small city, but it's yet it's a very important one. Uh, it is the home of uh, one of the most prestigious universities in Morocco, which is called the uh, University of uh, Al Akhawain, which is a private university in Morocco. And this city is is actually um, named the Moroccan Switzerland, uh, thanks to its big deal. Remember, uh, resembles with uh, with Switzerland, which is in 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 Europe for sure. So uh, in this city, especially in winter. Uh, it's 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 a direction for people who love skiing, uh, thanks to the snow, because uh, that's like uh, that's also a city where snow uh, happens every year, especially in winter. And then in spring, the city offers a very a very chilly weather and uh, very very green spaces. So you can find green spaces all over the city. Um, back a little bit. So I'm just trying to give you over ideas here. I'm not going into details because the time doesn't allow that. So I'm just I'm just trying to give you a broader sense or broader image, image of, 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 of Morocco. So when we go down uh, from Tangier, when we go to, to the middle, we go to the Atlas Mountains, basically, or we go to the high and middle Atlas Mountains. One of the most important cities in the in the Atlas Mountains is Marrakesh. It's um, Mar Marrakesh is actually also called the Moroccan, uh, the Moroccan tourism hub because it's the number one destination for tourists all over the world. Um, Marrakesh can offer you a contrast of historic buildings and modern buildings. And actually the city actually is divided in two parts. There is the modern city and there is the old city or what is called the Medina. Uh, Marrakesh also, uh, which was founded in, um, in 1062, uh, it's the most widely recognizable city in the Atlas of Morocco, as I said already. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the Marrakesh is, is surround, or the surrounding of Marrakesh, you can see there, um, 
a very uh, rich um, nature geography. You can um, this is what is called Urika or uh, Ozot also, which are the waterfalls. And then uh, Marrakesh is actually uh, it's known for its um, distinguished. It's called Jamal Kna Square, and that's and that's a UNESCO World Heritage, uh, and also for its astonishing Medina, very small alleys and very traditional houses, which are called also riyads. So this is what you can find just a few kilometers or few miles uh, away from Mar from Marrakesh city. It is the, and this is the the high Atlas mountain. So this is a home of waterfalls of snow and of also forest or uh, green green spaces. So most of these places are are found like um, uh, 100. 50, 50 miles from Marrakech city or 100 miles from Marrakech city. Then uh, after the middle of Morocco, then we then we are uh, in the south of Morocco. Talking about south, we differentiate between two areas, which, be, which means southwest and the southeast. So I am originally from southeast of Morocco and that's, and that's a desert area uh, uh, with, a, with a very dry climate and uh, very hot weather, especially in summer. But talking about Southwest, uh, we're talking about the, the Pacific Ocean, and one of the most important cities uh, in the Southeast is Agad in Southwest is Agadir. Um, so Agadir is also a very important city, uh, and uh, and it's also a touristic place uh, thanks to its um, distinct uh, mini soaks that you can find there, and also um, its its location. Uh, back to the words that I highlighted earlier, which, which are the Kasbahs. So the Kasbah is a very, is a very distinguished building. Actually, it's Kasbah or Qsur. They are literal, they literally means fortified buildings or for, fortified villages. And uh, um, back, back in history where Morocco was characterized by uh, Caius and uh, by it was governed by the, the law of nature in which the fittest, only the fittest survived. So people chose the hills or high, uh, or high uh, areas to build their houses and the houses they are built collectively. So with, with mainly four gates, there is one in the south and one in the north and one in the west and one in the east. So, uh, uh, so people build this so they can be protected from wild animals and from nomadic tribes and from other villages they, that they might attack them uh, at that time. Uh, they are World UNESCO World Heritage, uh, they are a UNESCO World Heritage. And actually one, this picture is called the uh, Qasba Ait bin Haddu. And uh, it was established since uh, um, uh, 1987, a World UNESCO, uh, a UNESCO World Heritage. And it's, there is also the title, the Moroccan Hollywood. So uh, this is also the home of one of the biggest, uh, the biggest studio or cinematic studio in Africa and in Morocco. Um, it attracts many international company, uh, film production companies, and many films actually were shot in this uh, area. Its city is called Where That, uh, to be specific. Um, like The Gladiator, uh, Prison Break, uh, and many other uh, movies are actually were actually shot in this in this specific uh, place. So and talking about the also the southeast of Morocco, it's the biggest oasis as this picture highlights. Uh, the oasis is made up of uh, palm trees. And then it's that's the desert. We differentiate here between two kinds of desert. It is one in the northeast, a few kilometers away from, but the most important uh, kind of deserts or locations are called Shigaga and Merzuga. Merzuga used to be the most famous one and still is. And Shigaga now is also a rising, uh, a rising also a uh, place popular for tourism also. Um, so I hope that I covered most of uh, this uh, parts. Uh, you can you can email me uh, in my personal email or you can check my YouTube channel, Sufian Sarawi. Uh, you can find videos there talking about Morocco in detail. So yeah, I hope that I, that. So if you have any questions, yeah, or 
Thank you, Tim. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, if you want to come out of screen share, I can uh, pass along some of the questions that are pouring in on the, the live stream. And we can get to as many as we uh, as we can. Before we get started, can you tell us what the the red flag is on the the wall behind you? Uh, that's that's the Moroccan uh, that's the Moroccan flag. Uh, that's the Moroccan flag. It's made with a green star in the middle, and uh, it stands for Morocco. That's the Moroccan flag. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's get right into questions. Um, Nikki and Jordan had the same question in the chat. They're interested in the sports that are played in Morocco, um, and if you personally play any of those sports. Sports? Yes. Yes. Um, well, one of the most famous sports activity in Morocco is soccer. That's everywhere, basically. It's soccer. And then there are also other sports. Uh, well, basketball is also played in Morocco, but but it's not that as famous as soccer, let's say. And uh, and there is also um, in the south. That's where I am from. Like we have an activity that people now are doing, which is sandboarding. And I have actually pictures illustrating mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's 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 called sandboarding. Uh, we do like boarding on sand. <laughs> um, so. Uh, and there is also like uh, swimming, uh, uh, g given the fact that in, in Morocco, we have the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. So especially in summer, like you find uh, the ocean or the beaches, like they are totally full of people swimming. So that's, that's also a sport activity. I say that that is very famous in Morocco. Okay, good questions. Let's keep the questions coming in the live chat. These are great. Uh, Greg would like to know what are some of your favorite Moroccan dishes or foods? Oh yes. Um, well, I can actually I can basically be telling you uh, for the next one hour. <laughs> 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 no, but um, like Morocco actually is very uh, the Moroccan cuisine is very rich and, and it's a widely known uh, aspect of Morocco also. Um, but to cite some examples, uh, we have tagines. And we have also Moroccan couscous, and we have also a uh, Moroccan bastela. So it's like bastela. It's uh, it's like a dish made from seafood and uh, chicken or fish. So depending on the taste or depending on your uh, on your choice. But these are some of the most important uh, dishes in Morocco. Talking of food. Okay, that sounds delicious. Yeah, I believe you. You could talk about that for an hour. Um, Greg would like to know, I'm sorry, Jordan wants to know um, if you can sort of highlight any special events or any special traditions that come to the top of your mind that are very unique to Morocco. Yes. Um, so here, uh, uh, I, I, I would like to, um, like to say, to sip, to divide them in two parts, let's say. So there is um, talking of music. Uh, so there are many festivals, like international festival, actually, that are uh, held in Morocco every year. Um, there is a jazz music or the Gnawa music. Uh, Gnawa is like, a, it's like a blues or like, it's actually like an African heritage. And uh, that's also, it also attracts many people from every single country in the world. Uh, it is held each year in um, in Sawira city, which is on the coast. And there, there is there is also uh, like a, um, uh, it's a festival of nomads, like festival of nomads, and that's actually in my city, in in Zagura city, in a village called uh, Mohammed Azlan, which is the which is a, like a, a small town on the borders with Algeria. Like that's like uh, the last. Um, uh, town in in Zagora and uh, and uh, that festival also attracts also many people, especially uh, be like spiritual people, people who like uh, to be in nature, and people who spend uh, like uh, like people who are meditating, like let's say like yoga people or meditation and stuff. And talking of uh, of um, again of sports, like there there are uh, surfing. Uh, uh, surfing competition in Morocco, in two city in 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 Tarazout, which is also on the coast, 
and in Sawira, which is also on the coast. And uh, and there are also like uh, many other many other events. Uh, there is also a festival of roses. It's in southeast of Morocco, and it's an international uh, uh, like event celebrating the 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 oasis and uh, specifically the roses in the southeast of Morocco. All right, wow, some great examples there. Um, Jordan would like to know what would normally be eaten for breakfast in Morocco, if you could just generalize a, a breakfast food. Um, <clears throat> we're talking of food here, we, I need to draw like a, a comparison between different areas because in Morocco, every area it has like its own specialty and its own characteristics. So talking, for example, from my region, from Southeast of Morocco, what people usually have uh, for breakfast is soup, like wheat, uh, from wheat, and dates. Mm -hmm. Like this is the best uh, thing that people eat. And uh, 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 like as a general idea here is that uh, in Morocco, like uh, uh, we do, most of people generally, like they do carry uh, uh, a, a, healthy, a healthy lifestyle, especially with food. So uh, in other parts of Morocco, like especially in the middle of Morocco, uh, people uh, people like uh, olive oil and uh, butter and bread. But bread is a very, very, very important aspect of Morocco everywhere, whether in the north or in the south or in the middle. We do consume a lot of bread and people eat a lot of bread. Okay. Basically, we use it in every single meal, in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Um... Rob would like to know how the coronavirus is impacting Morocco right now, if you know. Yeah, uh, um, I am actually following the news. Um, well, this is an international pandemic and like a global pandemic. So Morocco is also affected, especially when it comes to the economy. Um, uh, we know that Morocco is, is let's say, a, a developing country. So uh, even the states, which is the greatest country, it's 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 badly hit by it's badly hit by the by the by the coronavirus. But in Morocco, one of the one of the best thing that the Moroccan government actually did is that they anticipated the the spread of the coronavirus way a long way before it actually happened. So uh, when the corona was first uh, uh, when it when it first hit Europe. At that time, there were many tourists in Morocco going and coming to Morocco. So Morocco had to shut down the, the borders uh, in an attempt to curb or to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And then also it stopped all the like the sport events, all the gathering of people, more than 10 people is strictly prohibited. Um, so, but now we have almost 7,000 cases in Morocco, which is not that bad compared to other countries. But still, uh, like Morocco now made a three more week extension till uh, till actually June, till June, late June. So in an attempt, as I said, to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Okay. Um, we have a bunch of students think that sandboarding sounds really cool. And I think they'd like to travel to your home region in Southeastern Morocco to try it sometime. I um, can, if you, do, uh, I can, I can, uh, just, just for for a quick uh, show, some pictures of the, of that. Um. Yeah, I think that would be great. It's it's um, kind of a fascinating sport. Um, while you're looking for those, I would love to ask you a quick question. Um, one of one of the students in the chat, um, knowing that you're from southeastern Morocco, is wondering where you are now and what you're doing where you are. <clears throat> where I am right now. Yeah, why, what, what brought you to the United States? Um, I've always actually wanted to uh, experience, uh, like um, to experience, to have more experiences, especially on an international level. Um, back in 2017, um, I was granted an, an Erasmus scholarship to Europe. And since then, uh, like it's like my appetite to travel more has been open than like, um, so, um, so I came here uh, because basically I wanted, to, uh, like, I wanted to also to take to experience the American lifestyle, the American culture, and the American like educational system. And that's why I applied actually to Fulbright because I wanted to have this experience. So right now I am in North Carolina. I, I teach Arabic uh, at Binney College as a Fulbrighter or as 
foreign language teaching assistant. All right. Great. Do you have uh did you were you able to find some sandboarding photos? Yeah, I I took that. Yes. Is it visible? Yeah, I can see it. Do you use a snowboard? Like the same yes, board? Yes, that's me. Yeah, yeah, that's me actually in the picture. <laughs> and that's that, that's also something that, that we do uh, like uh, as a fun thing. That looks like a ton of fun. Um, you know, we're, we're right up against the end of our, our time here today and we had such great questions online. Wow, fantastic job, students. Thank you so much for your great questions for Sofian. Um, Sofian, I wanna ask you before we go, we ask um, all of our participants the same question. And that is once you are um, sort of freed from COVID-19, stuck in place and, and I don't know where you're you're off to after your your Fulbright ends or when you return to Morocco, but what would you like your next adventure to be? Um, well, actually, I should have actually left the states um, like 15 days, uh, yeah, no, 10 days ago, uh, because my visa was due May the 10th, but due to the COVID-19. So the borders are, are, are closed and, uh, and uh, even the Moroccan airspace also is closed. So um, Fulbright extended my stay here two more months, but with a possibility to leave uh, as soon as the borders open. Uh, my, next, uh, my next step is, well, we all know that the tourism sector especially like is one of the, of the most affected sectors uh, by this COVID-19. So I was counting on tourism actually when I go back to Morocco because that's that's what I love doing actually. I love to meet new people, experience different cultures and to show also people the Moroccan culture. But for now, I don't think uh, I will do for tourism. So I'm still trying to figure out what I will do after the COVID-19. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, we can tell that you love your country and you love your culture and you love talking about. It. So maybe we'll schedule a four hour call sometime in the future so you can actually anytime, anytime, show us all the, all the things you know. I could tell you were cutting it, it short today, but we really appreciated the yes, overview. Yes. It was I, I was I was actually um, the, uh, uh, due to the time limit. So uh, I made it very, very concise. So I can just cover uh, like some of the things about Morocco. But... Yeah. Well, you did a really nice job. You gave us a great sense of the overview of Morocco. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining Reach the World today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yeah, I want to, before you head out, I want to thank our entire live stream audience for going on this journey with us today. It was a great group of students online. Thank you for your questions. Um, you can join us again in just over an hour. We're going to talk about Kenyan culture and cuisine with Fulbright foreign language teaching assistant, Medina Mahat. And you can see the full lineup of Fulbright guests yet to come this week at athome.reachtheworld.org. So, Sophia, again, thank you so much. And until next time, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank the audience for their questions and for their time. Bye-bye, Tim. Thank you for having me.